There's a study that came out on the 23rd of May looking at vaccines versus the variant found in India, and spoiler alert, it's actually kind of good news. So we're going to be looking at that today. I've been watching the events in India in pretty much disbelief over the past few weeks. Cases have surged, hospital systems are breaking down, oxygen's running out. And the questions I had were whether it's all related to this new variant, and importantly, whether our vaccines still work on the variants. The Indian variant, or probably the better way to term it, would be the variant found in India, because we maybe don't know the true origin of it, but we can say it was first noted to be in India, is the B1617 uh, variant, and there's a few different subtypes. The subtype 2 is the one that's looking like it could become the dominant subtype, certainly as it's transferred here to the UK as well. I've seen a lot of things about it being a double mutant, it's actually got 13 mutations. The thing about the double mutant is that it's got two mutations on the spike protein that is of concern. The spike protein is basically a key and your cell has a lock and the spike protein attaches itself. It opens the gates to your cell. The cell itself is like a full course buffet. The virus goes in, decides to have a bit of this, replicate itself and eventually destroy the cell and pass on to other cells. The two mutations of concern, the first one is very similar to the UK Kent variant and South African variant, and the second one is similar to the California variant, and that is the combination of the two that is raising a lot of question marks about this virus. That combination hasn't really been seen so far. The question is, will it be more infectious? Will it be more deadly? At the moment, this new variant is fast becoming the dominant variant in India. Also, as it's transferred to the UK, it is doubling very rapidly, meaning that it's likely to become dominant here in the UK. Let's not forget, it was a similar type of picture for the UK variant. Again, it was more transmissible or more infectious than the original COVID variant. And therefore, it was able to pass on and infect a lot more people, become the dominant variant. I haven't yet come across data that suggests the new variant from India is more deadly or causing more hospitalizations, which is good news. However, I am seeing a little bit of data that suggests it's more infectious than other variants, and that means possibly more infectious than the UK variant, and itself would be a concern because that variant has spread around the world, and if the Indian variant is able to spread in countries very quickly, it could again put a strain on the healthcare systems in those countries. Now in the UK, we are just at the moment coming out of the lockdowns. The concern moving forward would be that if not enough people are vaccinated, then again, you'll get a big pressure on the healthcare system. Now, I know what you're thinking. I, I don't want another lockdown myself. So it's so, so important that the vaccination program is, is really ramped up and pushed forward so that we can stop another wave of this coming through. We don't yet have conclusive research that says whether vaccines are effective, but there is a study going on at the moment in Oxford and their preliminary results have indicated that vaccines will have some effectiveness on this virus. Now, it may not have the same level of effectiveness as the original variant, but importantly, it may protect you from being hospitalized or dying. And that's the main reason for having the vaccine. We want to reduce the number of hospitalizations. We want to reduce the number of deaths. We are, however, at the lab stage with this research, meaning that at the moment they're just using blood from vaccinated people and seeing if the new variant will cause a response. As always with research, you want to see how it pans out in real life, out in the outside world and in actual populations. So when it comes to the real world side, we'd have to have a look at the other variants to get an idea whether these vaccines are working. At the time in Qatar, there were two variants that were the most dominant and that was the UK variant and the South African variant. They found that the effectiveness of the vaccine was about 89% for the UK variant, but it dropped to 75% effective for the South African variant. But the important point is it was still over 90% effective at stopping hospitalization and death for people who had had the vaccine. Meaning that for the people who did develop the symptoms may have just had a milder version of COVID. And the key thing is 
that it wouldn't overload the hospitals, which is the main concern when the new variant comes through. The other study was a surveillance study in Israel, who was one of the first countries to vaccinate their population. And what they found was that with the vaccinations, they were about 95% effective at preventing COVID and about 97% effective at preventing death and hospitalization. So those are really high numbers and really, really effective. And at the time, it has to be mentioned that it was the UK variant, the Kent variant that was the dominant variant in Israel. I'm just having a look at the Moderna website as well and they are undertaking a study at the moment looking at whether a booster shot can actually help against the variants and what they've said is in laboratory tests much similar to the Oxford study we talked about they are finding that if they give a booster especially for the Brazilian and the South African uh, variant that they're able to to help neutralize the virus much like with the other lab study, the question would be whether this translates in real life, whether that would be effective. There are three take home messages from what we've talked about today. The first would be that I found no evidence that suggests that the new variant will be able to somehow sidestep the vaccinations that we've got. I think from the evidence that I've seen with the other variants and certainly some of the lab data that's been presented so far, it indicates that the vaccines will have some effectiveness and they will work. It may be slightly reduced, but the important part is it will hopefully still reduce hospitalization rates and death rates, which are the important two factors that we're looking for. Second of all, when we've talked about how effective vaccines are against the new variants, they've mainly been the common vaccines like the Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca that have been in these studies. Perhaps more research needs to be done on some of the other vaccines to be able to get a better picture um, on all of the vaccines' effectiveness. And excuse the midweek beard, but this study came out after I did my first set of shooting, but it was so important I had to include it. It looked at the Pfizer vaccine and it looked at the AstraZeneca vaccine in the UK with the new variant from India becoming dominant. For the Pfizer vaccine, it was 88% effective at stopping you from getting symptomatic COVID disease two weeks after the second dose. And when it was uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine, it was around 60%. It's important to say that that's after you've had the two doses of the vaccines. When it's only one dose that people have had for whatever reason, the effectiveness is only 30%. So it really highlights the importance of making sure you get both your vaccine doses done um, and, and not to get complacent when you've only had the one vaccine. The additional thing to say is, I know some people said, well, 60% doesn't sound that effective. The important part to say is that that's your symptomatic COVID disease in a person that we're looking at. What actually happens is when you look at the overall risk of a person being hospitalized or dying from COVID, that tends to be a lot better uh, than 60%. So for the other variants, those figures have been in the 90%. So, uh, and sometimes some of them have been, you know, close to 100. So really, those are the figures that we look at as doctors. We look at it and say, well, how likely is this variant to cause lots of hospitalizations? And if this vaccine is actually reducing that significantly in the 90%, then that's really, really positive. And lastly, what is happening in India is everybody's problem. That means rich nations, neighboring nations, not only because it's a humanitarian crisis, they're running out of space in hospitals, running out of oxygen, but also because if you allow the cases to surge up massively, you are increasing the chances of mutations and increasing the chance of new variants coming out of those nations. So I think India can almost be like a lesson for the world that when you allow cases to just go rampant, there can be consequences, which is why on this video, if you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful, there's only one thing I'll ask. You don't need to smash no like buttons or anything like that. I'll put a, a few links for charities that are helping out in India. If you've got your own charity that you donate to, please consider doing a donation. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next video.